Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Mondays. My name is Florian Ungo, and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And today I'm joined, I usually, by my friend and teaching partner, Madalina Guinness. Welcome, Madalina. Hello, Florian. Hello, everybody. Today we start a new session Absolutely. with a new topic. Absolutely. We start a new series of, of episodes. Series, on, yeah. Absolutely. On, on self-leadership, right? And, and what can we do as individuals to start leading and, and influence other people? And today we're going to kind of go through the summary of what we're going to cover in the next episode, right? Yes, yes. And I cannot wait to, 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 to discuss with you and our people watching us about sorry sorry i have something on my throat <laughs> to discuss uh, related to how to self-leadership because this is an important topic that usually uh, people who are at the beginning of their leadership um, career usually ask themselves how can i become a better leader absolutely i'm gonna share today you know we put something you know in a framework here so let's why don't we just share the framework for the beginning for for people to kind of see to have the whole picture and then we're gonna then we're gonna dive in each of them individually. So this is not in a, in a order of importance, right? But we have identified in our work with individuals and companies from around the world, and also being part of the Maxwell Leadership Organization, that these are, you know, characteristic. These are some pillars, right? That we have identified when it comes to becoming a leader, right? You know, we, yeah. we look at attitude, character, self-discipline, priorities, problem solving, vision and they kind of stand on 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 the you know on the foundation of personal growth right because if we don't grow as individuals there's no way for us to become a leader right to be able to you know to lead other people and everything leads to us gaining influence with other people this is uh, really important to say from the beginning that uh, these are let's say the most appealing uh, properties or characteristics of a leader to actually develop within themselves to uh, to become a better leader and to actually influence people, but those are not the only the only characteristics. So you need to pay attention to this uh, to this part if you are if you are looking at this image. Absolutely. So so these are some of the most important we have found, yeah. right? Yeah. And the ones yeah. that we thought. Uh, you know, will create a really good base, a really good blueprint. If you are looking to develop yourself as a leader, then you can follow us throughout the next eight episodes, and we're going to cover each of them individually. So today, today we're going to just you know look at an overview of them and you know why they are important to leadership. But then on the next episode, we're going to dive deeper in each of them individually. Yeah, I cannot wait. Absolutely. I have some examples prepared already. <laughs> absolutely so so okay so so why don't we start with for example with attitude because this is one of the things that i really love so because one of the quotes that i really love is uh it's a saying by one of my mentors who says that when you become a leader you give up your right to complain so when you become a leader you give up your right to complain and the reason being is like think about how your attitude as a leader sets the stage for whatever happens in the team, right? You, as a leader, you set the stage for the interactions and for the attitude of the team. So if you go one morning and if you don't feel well and then you have you had a bad night and you go in the office with, with that kind of bad attitude and you, you don't feel like doing things, how do you think your team will feel? They will come to you and say, and to comfort you and say, hey, why not, Florin? It's going to be okay. It's going to be right. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. Most likely is that they will take on that attitude as well and say, well, this is one of those bad days. If, if not even the, you know, our, our boss, uh, you know, likes to work today, why, why should we do it? You know, why should we work today? And so if you are already a leader, you know why this is important. But if you're not the leader and if you want to become a leader, then what happens is that you want to, pay attention to your attitude and, and, and look at, you know, is, is my attitude, is the attitude that I'm expressing in the workplace or, or wherever you want to become a leader, you know, is the attitude that I'm expressing, is that the attitude for leader? If I would be someone else, would I follow me, right? Would I follow someone with my attitude or would I not? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is just to kind of illustrate 
how important attitude is to to leadership so so what would be then one of the one of the the ones that you really really like and it resonates with you Madalina? uh the really well one of them it's actually the priority or priorities so this is a characteristic of any leader of any successful leader they will have a lot of activities on their plate and they need to organize themselves in uh, and other of course others of course to uh, better solve the priorities on their day or on their list and uh, of course when you are a leader and the more you uh, um, you go up to the organization ladder and you have uh, an even more important leadership position, your responsibility grows, the list of re responsibility grows, and your, let's say, benefits diminishes. So, <laughs> so you need to pay attention to this part. It's not like, okay, I'm on top, I'm a, I'm a leader, and now everything, uh, it will be even better. I will have more rights than I had before as like a normal employee. So when we think about uh, the priorities, I actually prepared one uh, one image that is uh, representative for this one. And uh, yes, thank you, sorry, uh, Florin, for sharing. So just looking at this picture, let's imagine that we are people from the right uh, where we actually carry the the stones, uh, but pay attention to the wheel of the of the char. Uh, you see that the wheel is actually squared, not round. So they struggle to get the things done, to, to get the stones to somewhere else. And they even ignore the solution that is right next to them to change the type of the wheel to actually move uh, faster and better. So in these kind of situations, uh, the metaphor for leadership is you need to, first of all, you need to identify where your, what are your priorities. Is your priority to go to with those stones to the bed, to a bed, to another place with hard work? Or is, uh, is your priority to actually get the work done, to get the stones to the different place and also with, um, with less hard work than it, it's supposed to be? So this is the metaphor related to hard work versus uh, smart work. So when you think about priorities, it doesn't, uh, when you have a lot of priorities on your plate, doesn't mean if you are too busy for anything, it doesn't mean that you are working smarter. It's, it's, just meaning that you are working harder. So you need to give one moment, one simple moment, just to think about your priorities. Is this where I should be? Is this how I should do things or not? So in this situation, pay, pay attention to uh, people around you or to things around you. Maybe you will find a better solution to actually achieve uh, the goal and uh, work smarter, not harder. Absolutely. And if you're now on a journey to become a leader, then of course, if you set your priorities right before you are a leader, then absolutely you're going to be able to set priorities when you're a leader. Because exactly yeah. as you said, uh, uh, with leadership, you get more responsibilities and less freedom, right? And this is the yeah. opposite of what people think, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> contraproductive, <laughs> contraintuitive, sorry. It's uh, contraintuitive. Uh, and this actually links really well into another one that I like. It's self-discipline, right? If you think about self-discipline, uh, this also requires for us, if we want to become a leader, if you want to lead other people, to be disciplined, right? And when you have more responsibilities and you have freedom, your discipline and, and being self-disciplined, it's even more important. And for me, self-discipline is almost like following through with what I say, right? So if I promise you something, and if I'm still, you know, we're a colleague, we're on the same team, but I promise you that I'm gonna deliver something by a date, and I don't deliver, you know, what what kind of message does that send to you about, you know, how committed, you know, how disciplined I am, right? If, mm -hmm. if I promise to do something and I don't do it, then, well, when, when I'm gonna be a leader, would that change, right? It might mm -hmm. change. But, but I don't think that it will change that much because becoming a leader is not going to change you as individual. It's, it's just going to amplify what it's already there. It's like money, you know, when we say money change people. No, money doesn't change people. You know, yeah. power change people. No, power doesn't change people. Money and power only amplify what it's already there. So if people yeah. were kind and self-disciplined before becoming a leader and having power, they will be self-disciplined when they have power. 
right? And so yeah, yeah. that's why I really love this idea here with, with, with self-discipline. And, and for some of us, you know, we might need an accountability partner. And if you are in that situation, you maybe need a coach, a mentor, someone to sit with you and to be accountable to. Well, you know, reach out to us. We both coach and, and uh, you know, um, and mentor other people. So for me, self-discipline, it's when I give myself a command and I follow through. And sometimes I don't trust myself into, into giving myself a command and, and just promise it to myself. So I need other people to hold me accountable. <laughs> That's why I have a coach and I have a mentor. I have actually two two mentors and a coach that I work with just because I want someone else to hold me accountable. So if you struggle with self-discipline, then then having a, an accountability partner, you know, might help you. But we know that self-discipline, when you're gonna be a leader and your influence and your decisions will actually impact the lives of other people, that will be even more important. So if you are able to, you know become better at your being disciplined before you're a leader it will be much easier when you when you become a leader i have one example here florin with self-discipline i actually um i have a watermelon in my fridge and it's a big one and uh, starting tomorrow evening i will be away from home for one week and uh, the self-discipline actually is should i cut it should i shouldn't i cut it because if i just cut it and leave it there for one week it's going to uh to not not to be good anymore you know in yeah. one week uh, you know every fruit that you leave it uh, just cut open uh, it's not going to be good anymore and the self-discipline in this case is uh first of all i was uh, thinking to myself i have I want to taste it. I want to to have uh, to have a piece of it, like a big one. But the rest of it, it will just stay in the fridge with, without being used. And on the other hand, is actually me thinking of uh, that uh, that important experiment that a psychologist did few years, well, many many years ago, with the cookie. With kids, if you just uh, leave the uh, leave a cookie in front of a, or a cake in front of a kid, mm -hmm. with the promise that uh, if they don't eat it for I don't know five ten minutes, then you will get two of them. And the many kids just uh, cannot wait for ten minutes to actually get a better reward. They just eat the cake in front of them. So it's the same in in discipline. Of course, we are talking about discipline in the leadership position, but as you said, uh, Florin, before is uh, if you train yourself to be self-disciplined now, when you have less responsibilities, then you already you are already trained when uh, the, the things will be harder for you when you are a, a leader and you you have more responsibilities to do. So in my mind, with uh, my watermelon in my head was, uh, I need to be more self-disciplined. So in this case, I leave aside my uh, my willing to eat the, the watermelon and uh, it's because it's for a better cause. So if I can do this, then I actually train myself for a self-discipline. So it's a, it's a good uh, thing to actually think about and relate the, the ideas that we discuss related to leadership with our day-to-day -day lives. So I really wanted to give you this example. <laughs> sure. So tell us what's what's the next one you you like out of the, uh, the next one uh, the next pillar that I uh, I want to discuss is uh, related to problem solving mm -hmm. and uh, of course any leader will have like priorities will have a lot on their plates to uh, solve uh, many many problems and maybe every single day of them being leaders they need to solve problems. So for this uh, for this topic, I have uh, another uh, representative image for uh, for uh, problem solving, and you may know about the Schrodinger's uh, cat. And I decided to choose a box and not the cat inside the box, uh, because in this situation, if you know the if you don't know the experience, the experiment. Uh, I don't know it, so so maybe I don't, oh, you don't know it. like me. So it's better that you give us the context. Okay, good. Uh, it's a little sad. It's uh, not. Uh, it's not a very, let's say, pleasant, pleasant uh, example. But I will explain the the experiment. Experiment. So inside this uh, box, imagine that there is a cat, 
and next to the cat inside and still inside the box there is a uh, poison something with poison and uh, the cat inside it can actually touch the poison thing and uh, inhales the poison and die or doing nothing with the poison not touching the poison the poison and it will be alive but eventually at some point in the future the cat will touch the poison and uh, the cat will die so the schrodinger's experiment experiment is related to at this point of time now we have uh, at the same time two things happening the cat is alive and the cat is dead <laughs> So okay. we have at the same time, we have two things. The cat is alive and the cat is dead. But we don't know what is the truth until we open the box and actually see what happens, what, what's happening inside the box, if the cat is dead or not. So related to this topic, uh, uh, the, the relationship between this uh, Schrodinger's box or Schrodinger's cat and the leadership is that when you have a dilemma when you have a problem in front of you it's better not to make a philosophy out of it i said okay why is the cat in the box why is there poison in the box who was responsible for the poison will the cat touch the poison or not so instead of doing this long list of philosophy things just take the situation as it is take the box open the box and see what is with the cat what's happening with the cat if, if the cat is alive, then okay, take it out of the box, remove the poison, put it in a safe place and go ahead with your tasks. If the cat is dead, well, you, you can decide what to do with the cat and the poison and everything. So related to problem solving, uh, take the problem as it is in the real, in the real life, in the real time and uh, don't uh, blame blames. Uh, don't uh, philosophize about it, don't make stories about it, just take the problem as it is. And uh, if you train yourself to be better at problem solving and not to be caught in all the stories, then you will be a better leader. Yeah, absolutely. That's a nice example. So so it's about us uh, yeah. you know, taking taking the situation as it is and, and yeah. actually do something about problem. And, and this comes back to a code that I like about also problem solving you know if you think about someone being you know i'm worried about a problem compared to someone being concerned about the problem you know someone which yeah. is worried yeah. about a problem he talks about a problem a lot do not yeah. think about it. someone which is <laughs> not concerned, doing anything about that <laughs> exactly someone which is concerned about a problem they find a solution they look for a solution so so it's uh but but as leaders, right? You know that one one way for us to gain leadership. If if you're not a leader today, right? If you're not a leader, and if you want to become a leader, if you are able to solve problems for your team, for your organization, for your company, and you will get you know notice. People will start noticing you. And if you come with that kind of attitude that that Moderina just shared, like when you see a problem, let's let's solve the problem, not philosophize about the problem. You know, <laughs> then then you will get noticed, right? And, and you you have a chance to you know be promoted and, and get the leadership position so if you're not the leader uh, you know problem solving is one of those key qualities and it's one of the pillars of leadership and in order yeah. for you to gain influence with people you have to show that you can solve problem for them like who wants yeah. a leader who cannot solve problems right yeah yeah if you yeah. come to your leader with a problem and say well there's nothing i can do about it then while you're a leader you're probably in the wrong position <laughs> And uh, pay, pay attention that with this problem solving, you as a leader with problem solving, your people expect you to solve problems and the leaders above you expect you to resolve problems. <laughs> so <laughs> no matter what you do, you need to solve uh, solve problems. Uh, absolutely. And, and this actually links well into the, the other pillar, character, right? You know, this is the one that I really love because for me, character equals trust so when 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 i think about someone's character do i think do i trust this person do i trust this person mm -hmm. you know uh, can i give them the keys to my home or the keys to, would, would i give them my car to drive it right mm -hmm. this, this mm -hmm. kind of trust or or would i get on a bus and they be the driver would i guess when i get on the boat and they will be the captain 
the ah, worst to me okay. when I get on a plane when they're the captain. Because, uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. you know, at the end of the day, if we don't trust someone, well, we're not going to play full out. Because if we don't know their intentions, we're not going to be open. And when we don't play full out, we don't bring our full self to the table. And when we don't do that, then, you know, we don't actually come to with, with the best solutions. We, we don't move as fast as we could. We don't solve the problems that we could solve because I, I will, might withhold the solution rather than give it to you. Uh, so exactly. for me, I don't know if you can be a leader without character because character is, is almost like us with self-discipline, right? Uh, these are things that are very, very personal, but if they lack or if they're not at the right level, you know, they can make or break someone. You know, if, if someone could be the best leader in the world, if you hear that they, they uh, you know, misuse the company money or they misuse funds or, or they had a, mm -hmm. an affair or, or something like that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore doesn't matter how good they were. So for me, those are the non-negotiable character, self-discipline, attitude. So that's why if you want to become a leader, well, then you want to have, you know, the character of a people, of a person that, that people want to follow. If you think about someone, if you think about a person that you admire and you start writing a few words about them that you admire, you're going to see that things that come up on, on that list have to do with, with, attitude with character uh you know maybe mm -hmm. they're positive supporting reinforcing right usually that's what we admire at other people so if you want to become a leader you know you need to uh, show these these uh, characteristics so other people also notice you and they want to follow you mm -hmm. yeah and uh, of course we will when we get to characters we will uh, to character quality we will uh, get more details about it but just to, to start with, so you can have an idea how to build character is uh, related to the qualities of a leader. Character means that what you think, what you say, and what you do are aligned. And uh, in case, uh, let's say, one of them is not aligned and people start noticing that you said something and you did uh, otherwise, uh, the solution for this one would be to, first of all, acknowledge that you, you got it wrong and try your best not to repeat it again because people won't trust somebody who doesn't do what they say or what they promise they will do so in this situation pay attention to integrity from this point of view this is uh, the first uh, um, the first uh, let's say the most the most important way to build character this is how i know it related to that absolutely so there was there was one more pillar right was, was yeah. vision. why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit why vision is important yes i really love vision um as as the quality of the leader and when i think about the vision i actually imagine the leader being uh, like you you can see in the next picture if you share for in with us okay so just imagine that you are on top of a mountain and you got lost and for you to find your way home is actually to be in the top of the mount on the top of the mountain and look around you because then you can identify where is the maybe the volcano where is uh, the sea where can you see a port where can you see a village or a city somewhere but if you are down there in the jungle or at the bottom of the of the mountain you won't be able to actually have a greater vision above the place and you don't know exactly where you need to be or when you need to go, what direction. But it's not uh, it's not enough just to be on the top of the mountain to look around you and in this case to see the river. It's actually to see a clear vision of the above, from the above. So imagine that, uh, um, that you have some, maybe some eye problems you don't see clearly. So if you're on top of the mountain, it doesn't help you because you can just it's very diffuse it's very blurry you don't actually you cannot identify where is the volcano where is the river where is the sea where is the port the village um so in this situation you also need some help 
which uh, uh, in leadership uh, terms, I, I guess it says uh, the, the, len the lens. Yeah, you need a clear lens so you can actually focus on what you, where you need to go and see a clear vision of uh, where you are, a clear image of, of what you're looking for. So it's not enough just to be on the top of the mountain if you don't see clearly. Uh, it's, it's also important for you to see clearly, not only to be on top of the mountain. So from that point, what do you think can happen, Florin? If a leader is on the top of the mountain and has this land in, in front of them and they can see clearly, what is the next step for a leader? What do you think? Well, if they if they see clearly, it means that they could share actually the vision with the with those that they lead, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That would be one one case. Of course, you can uh, share the vision with other people. He said, "Yeah, I, I saw the river. I saw the village. Is that way? We need to yeah. go that way." Then the people will follow. But if you don't share the the vision with your people, the risk would be to um not to be believed first of all that the 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 village is that direction and not the other way around if you go backwards then you go to the volcano to the active volcano you will die <laughs> yeah so people won't believe you but uh it's very important that in the previous uh in the previous discussion in yeah a few few seconds ago you discussed about character because you can you can be on top of the mountain you can have a clear vision of the place you know everything you are a good leader but if the people doesn't trust you sorry if the people don't trust you you can say the village is that way and they won't believe you and they will go backwards yeah and that's so why all of, all of these uh, yeah sorry so that's why all of these actually are pillars right so if you want yeah. to if, if we go back to this picture if you want to yeah. gain influence right you need to have all of them think about yeah. if you if you don't have the vision or if you don't have the you know the character and people do not trust you right you know how stable yeah. your your you know uh your leadership foundation would be and so i'm i'm so excited to share all of these and actually dive deeper in each of them individually on the next episode and then you know we haven't touched on this but kind of personal growth for me you know is the foundation like it's impossible for us to, to want to become a leader without having the foundation of of personal growth because mm -hmm. this yeah, this totally. actually comes with a curiosity mindset right so if you're not curious to actually look at your attitude to, and understand you know what kind of attitude do leaders have right if you're not curious about learning priorities and learning how to set priorities if you're not curious about solving problems you're not curious uh, uh, and looking at solutions if you're not curious to to learn more how to cast vision and how to uh, you know share the vision with your team and then of course you're not going to develop as a leader so that's why i believe this is these are you know they all fit together in, in, in this kind of structure which gives the the foundation and also the strengths of, of your your leadership so yeah th that's what we're going to do on the next episode right we're going to take them one by one we're going to cover them one by one we're going to expand on that and i think we're also going to build a, a a guide for for people to uh to take an assessment right i think we, yeah, we can yeah. list the, the qualities of a leader and and actually give that to people so they they take the assessment and and they kind of self uh self-assess uh you know where they're at in each of the qualities of the leader and then we're gonna give them more details into these into these six uh six areas i put it seven keys because there are the six pillars plus the personal growth uh which which creates the seven keys and is there um, anything else that you want to add madalina uh first of all uh, it's important as you said that uh, for for anybody to grow as a leader they actually need to know from the beginning where they are at at this moment so i really love what you put as a title to start leading from right where you are you need to know exactly uh, what level of leadership on what level of these qualities uh, you are at at the moment so you can start to develop on them and uh, after a while you you do the assessment again and uh, actually see what improvements you did on these uh, six qualities and everything based on the personal growth and everything actually leads to influence which actually means leading 
because leadership means influence, nothing more, nothing less, as John Maxwell says. So I, I don't have anything to add. I cannot wait for the next uh, discussion together to, to start with the first quality. So which would you choose to start with? I think we probably going to start with attitude. Is that what we said? It's probably going to be attitude. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how I remember, but I wanted to be sure. So we will yes, start attitude with the gonna first be, right? So yeah. next Monday, we're going to discuss, you know, why attitude is important for you and how can you develop, uh, you know, as a leader with, with attitude. I cannot wait for the next call. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in today and we look forward to see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.